Hello and welcome to Star Productions. I'm Max Desir. You are with Spiritually Trained and Renewed Productions. Today I have with me founder, artistic director, producer, Sean Witzel in the house. You don't want to miss this. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Max is here with Spiritually Trained and Renewed Productions. I have Mr. Sean Witzel in the house. Would you say hi to the folks? Hello, everyone. It's good to be here. Man, I'm super excited to have you. Super excited. Uh, I've been tracking him down at least three months or so. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> I was busy schedule. He got a chance to uh, honor us with his presence. Man, I'm super excited because you are one of the brothers that's always inspired me to... Um, get my theater thespian uh, creativity out there because of what you've been doing. So I want to talk a little bit about that. First, if you would tell us, because a lot of my audience may not know, I hope they do, who is Sean Witzel? Ooh, who is Sean Witzel? Um, you know, I'm just, um, I'm a guy who loves people and um, loves the arts, and I've always wanted to, um, use those two to to help people yeah. and so um that's my mission in life is to use the arts and the gifts and the blessings that i've been given to spread yeah. to other people and uh so i enjoy i enjoy doing that and just having fun and and making a difference so man you have mm -hmm. uh you have made an impact on many lives including mine being uh an entrepreneur of your own theater company being an artistic director uh, being a writer and producing your own play. Mm -hmm. I want to talk quickly about uh, those different part of your entertainment life because uh, not many can do all four, run a business successfully, uh, and then write, produce, and direct. And many wants to be Tyler Perry, but not many can do it. <laughs> so if you would talk to us a little bit about, first of all, the name of your company is the Destiny Theater Experience. Mm -hmm. And, and, and having done some research, I know that Destiny is your daughter. Yes. If you would tell us why did you decide to name the theater after Destiny, your daughter? Well, I, I founded the theater a, a year after um, she was born. And I was trying to come up with names. And, you know, when, you have, when you're a father for the first time and you got this new human being in your life who like means the world to you That's and beautiful. you do anything for yeah. and so she was just inspiring me so much and so many aspects of my life that I just wanted to give that gift to her you know I wanted to mm -hmm. um, name my company after her because she was like motivating so many of the things that I was doing so and, and, and the word destiny itself is is so there's so much strength there's so much hope in that mm -hmm. And, and I've seen that through the different plays you put together. Um, I know that you were with a, um, uh, what is it, uh, Theater 7 production? Dream 7. Dream 7. Yes. And then from Dream 7, you uh, started uh, the Destiny Theater Experience. So talk to us a little bit about your life first as an actor and how did you start making the switch? Because I know you started writing for, since high school. Mm -hmm. So how did you start making the switch and thought that your material was good enough to, to write and then you could actually present it to an audience and they can get something out of it? Yeah, I think that comes from um, the fact that I was always writing growing up the whole time. And I had teachers and other people who always had a lot of confidence in my ability. So um, when they saw talent, they saw natural talent, so they encouraged that. I got encouraged to be in like speech contests and essay contests. So <laughs> I had confidence in my writing prior to becoming a playwright. I actually wrote little plays and stuff when I was in when I was a kid that never I never did anything with. But I actually wrote and produced my first play when I was in high school still with a partner of mine, a friend of mine, and we, we co wrote it and co produced wow. and directed. So even become even before becoming an adult, um, I had already, you know, I was already a playwright. And so um, with, with Dream 7, I was I joined this group of people who came together to do a play, and mm -hmm. the play was successful, so we decided to become a theater company. And it's headed by Michael L. Walker. So he's the, um, the founder of that 
particular company and I'm, I was a founding member <laughs> and I was with the company for years and um, just through that process and through the process of uh, producing a play in high school, I learned you know more about what it takes to to put a play on its feet and to become a, a lot of work. Producer. Man, <laughs> who are you telling? I was up until five in the morning building a set last night. So, wow. so um, I decided I wanted to you know as an actor, we have you know you're at the mercy of the people who who are on the audition board sure. or directors or whatever who decide if they want you in their show and then they decide which part you're going to get mm -hmm. and all that. So <laughs> I decided that I wanted to, and it's, it's difficult for uh, actors of color too. And so I wanted to create another space where um, other, you know, black actors as well. I mean, it's open to anybody, but um, there are people who can come and, and play mm -hmm. and learn and, and grow and be able to get on stage without having to wait, um, you know, wait until somebody, Five years for the next. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so, role. so yeah, so I've been able to give give a lot of people, you know, a lot of opportunities, and that's you know that's what I love. Yeah, man, and and you've done a great job at it. Um, so you write, you direct, you produce for the Destiny Theater Experience, and I've seen it over and over again when I come see your plays. Have you been asked, and do you also do it for other theater companies? Yes. Um, I get asked to write stuff all the time. <laughs> People want me to write their movies, books, <laughs> all the time. And I'm just now branching out into that a little bit more. I've always been, you know, I've always helped people who who needed help writing stuff. So I try to do that as much as I can. But I'm also trying to create a business out of that too. Now yeah. like people come to me, and I'm I like, hey, I really do not have time to do this for free as much. I can give you some advice, I can give you some feedback, but if you want me to write something, like, so it's, so now I'm <laughs> putting my business hat on a little bit more. Um, but yeah, um, I get asked to direct, I've, I directed for Lakewood Theater last year. Wow. Um, or maybe in the year before, I can't remember. I did um, um, a soldier's play there. Um, I've directed for Sister Style Productions in the past. Yeah. You know, anytime, like, I'm an artist, so I don't limit my work to just my company if something inspires me or motivates me or people want me to be a part of their vision. Yeah. And if it makes sense for me, then I'll go and do it. Nice, yeah. nice. And I, I'm, I'm surprised, you know, the time when I used to run Circle Players, I've always wanted you to come as one of our directors come on board. I wanted you to submit yeah, something. Yeah, <laughs> man. I get, you know what? I wanted you to come and submit something. People, you know, I, so, I, I always would say, oh, I'm going to submit. And, um, you know, just, yeah, got, you know, with my own company. It's just, with so much you, know, you got yeah, going on. Yeah, Absolutely. So sometimes I miss deadlines. So I was like, oh, I wanted to submit to that. But, you know, deadline yeah. was last week, so... So you have worked on several projects with Destiny Theater. I mean, you have so many plays out there. And it's a shame if you've never seen one of Destiny Theater's uh, production, shame on you. You should go out there. <laughs> Something's coming out soon. You should go out there and watch it. <laughs> but uh, if we go all the way back to 2014 with uh, Unsheltered, if we look at uh, you tackling women, uh, actually, that's one, one play. I wanted you to talk a little bit about that. And I've noticed that with your plays, you are tackling real life situations. Mm -hmm. uh, I could see myself in some of your plays because I've been through it. Uh, where does your inspiration come from? You know, I mean, just everywhere. Um, with Unsheltered, um, I had, um, it was 2010, I think I took a job at um, a domestic violence shelter. So I was there and it just, it was something that I was really passionate about. And um, it was um, an eye-opening experience for me mm. seeing how, um, seeing that side of domestic violence. Because I had seen um, aspects of domestic violence before, but to see where, like when a woman has to, you know, go, basically go into hiding. Yeah. Um, because she doesn't know, you know, she doesn't have a safe space to be without yeah. somebody, the, their person, the abuser knowing where she is. And sometimes she has kids and being able to like sit there and have to have these conversations and have to ask these very personal questions and deal with these women who have gone through that. And um, it was just something that um, 
that I wanted to honor them in that way because I met some great women there, mm. and it was a uh, it was uh, an experience for me that I felt like needed to be shared. So I didn't write about the women that I knew, but I, I created a fictional situation yeah. kind of inspired by my experience working at that shelter. And um, that was, it hit home. That was a great play. Thank you. A lot of things get under my skin. And I think uh, when I see people abusing women, it doubles that. So that, well, that was a play that as a man who is for women, mm -hmm. when I see any man uh, abusing a woman, whether it's physically or verbally, it, it does something to me, man. I, I'm usually a very pacific man. I've been told I'm very calm. Mm -hmm. But when I start dealing with that subject, it it, it does something on the inside yeah. of me. And I think uh, you cast it well. It elevates something inside of me where you just want to go home and, and find out any man who's been abusive to a woman and beat him a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> We're right. not advocating violence, but right. that's how much it did to me. And I think you've done a marvelous job at that. At, so that's only a, a little bit of uh, the stuff I've seen you do. And at times, uh, even in 2014, you've put something called Seven Plays in Seven Days. Yeah. And that's daring. That's like for people who know theater, who know how much work goes into this, for somebody to put seven plays in seven days, I would love for you to elaborate on that. How do you even pull that off? You know, man, the thing about it is uh, I have these ideas and uh, I'm pretty ambitious in my thinking and and I just don't let things, the things that seem like the challenge, those are, that, that attracts me. Yeah. I'm just like, I can do that. That's doable. So like everybody thought I was crazy, but it was the seventh anniversary of my theater company. I yeah. wanted to do something special. And so I had been, um, you know, I had been writing these plays that I've done over the course of seven years. And then you got people who discover you later. So yeah. they miss like the first part of your, your journey. Sure. So it was like a retrospective. It was my way to take like my seven strongest plays that I had written mm -hmm. and to, you know, to honor the seven years and each night of the week, we mm -hmm. had a different show. I directed all of them. I don't know if that was smart. <laughs> if you look at the one of the pictures, there's a picture of me holding a cake uh, that someone had made in celebration. Like, I got two cakes that day. And I'm holding a cake. I took a picture. I think my mom took the picture. And you can see just how exhausted <laughs> I was. <laughs> I probably look exhausted right now. But then, so, um, but yeah, so what I did was I, t I took those plays. I assembled a cast. I told, you know, I was like, this is what I'm doing. I reached out to actors who had been in the plays before and people that I was currently working with. Just like, this is my vision. Everybody's like, oh, that sounds like a cool idea. Crazy, but cool. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so most of the cast were like, most of the actors were only in one play. A couple did more than one. A few did more than one, but most of them were only in one play. And I started, not soon enough, not early enough as I thought I did, but I started pretty, pretty early um, for one of the plays in particular because I knew it was going to be a, a monster. So, um, and, and I would just like rehearse this day with this play, this day, and then wow. one, a couple of times I would have like five, five cast in, at my church. We'd be in different rooms. So <laughs> I'd give everybody something to do and I was literally wow. popping from room to room, which is not, you know, it's like you got to do those things like that yeah. to get the, the kind of, if you want to do something that ambitious, you got to do, you know, you might have to do something like yeah. that to get it done. So. Yeah, man. I had to find out how you even pull something like that off. Yeah. And and uh, that was ambitious. That yeah. was ambitious. Would you do it again? I would. You know, I actually planned on doing it for the 10th anniversary. But, like, when I got the idea, it was just kind of too late for me to, like, knock it out. But I, I do have plans to do it again because nice. I wanted it to be even, even bigger. It was super successful. Um, and people were, um, you know, a lot of people were involved. Yeah. It was great. Man, uh, congratulations with that. Thank you. That, that's a lot of work. I can barely manage to direct one play. <laughs> that's a lot of work. So when I'm thinking of seven days, uh, seven plays in seven days, I think of titles like Unsheltered, mm -hmm. uh, um, Beyond Those Ties, and The Pastor's Sh Shadow, mm -hmm. House of Hearts, mm -hmm. uh, Never Been Home. Never Been Home. Um, do you have a yeah, favorite so right far, here. whether you have written or directed? 
So yeah, they're like, you know, like you put your heart and soul, and for me, because I care a whole lot about what it is that I'm writing, the subject matter. Uh, I, I'm a I'm a person who cares a lot about my writing because I feel like that's the thing that I'm most naturally talented in. You mm. know, so um, so. And if uh, we don't have good writing, we don't have nothing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you need good writing. Yeah. And so, um, so like, yeah, I put my heart and soul into into all of them, and and you know, it just depends on what's what's going, what was. What was my mission for that particular play? What was going on in my life as I was writing it? Um, so they're all special to me for that particular reason, especially because they all mean something different to certain people. Like yeah. my personal favorite has never been home because it's um, it's one of the, my earlier plays and it's like, um, I think the most well-written is the most well-received in my opinion. And it's, it's, uh, it's that play that people like, that's when people got to know me as a playwright because that was like one of the first things I'd done. And they're like, oh, this is like your first play or, you know, basically one of my first plays. It was my very first, but yeah. Um, but it, was, it became hard to top. You know, it's like, <laughs> where do I go from here? Because these people, you know, love it so much. But Never Been Home, um, that's my mother's favorite and that's a lot of people's favorites. Wow. Too. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I got to tell you, one of the plays uh, that you directed I had the opportunity to be in is uh, before it hits home. Yes. And to this day, when uh, people who know me as an actor would approach me, ask me what's my favorite play, that's that's what I told them it yeah. is. I think it's one of those roles you gave me that uh, that stretched me the most. You know, uh, maybe the one problem I had was uh, uh, um, people would come to the director afterward and said, was he adopted in the family? Because, <laughs> <laughs> because his, accent. his accent was a little bit of uh, <laughs> awkward. But uh, in terms of the acting, I think uh, it, it stretched me so much that I played a bisexual uh, jazz musician that I actually became physically sick mm -hmm. during the show mm -hmm. because I was so being so mentally prepared. I think my body just reacted to the whole thing. Yeah. And, uh, it, it hit home. That yeah. one hit home for me. And yeah. I loved it. You did a great job, man. Thank you, brother. Thank you. <laughs> I, Thank the, you. the scene, the, 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 remember the the scene where it's uh, your character interacting with two other actors at the oh, same man. time? Oh, man. That was a beautiful, yeah. beautiful scenery, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. With uh, Mary McCollum was on one side and then Dave was on the other side yeah. and going back and forth. So thank you for the directing that because just thinking about back and words, two people, because I can picture it in film. I'm, I'm more of a film guy, so mm -hmm. I can picture it in film style, how you would split the skin, uh, the the screen, mm -hmm. and show both of these. So that was that was really well done. I think that's good. one play that I probably would do again. Yeah, that's, that's the one of my favorite uh, scenes to direct. I love that scene. That was beautiful. And yeah. I think uh, my second favorite would have to be when... Uh, uh, my mom uh, found out, and uh, when my dad found out, it was hard. When my mom found out, it was hard. But toward the end, it was in, it was interesting to see who switched, who came, who was with me, mm -hmm. and who stopped being with me. Mm -hmm. And man, we were bawling out. We cried so much during that scene. Yeah, uh, Kenneth Dozier. Mm -hmm. Oh man, we had a good time. Yeah, good time. So I know time. I know you're running. You got another. He's got two plays that he's got to <laughs> uh, deal with right now. So we're running for time, but there are some questions that are so important to me, so work that I've seen you done, yeah. and I would love to touch on those. So every end of summer, beginning of fall, um, the Destiny Theater Experience, uh, Sister, Style, Sister Style Productions, mm -hmm. and I believe another company, Dream 7, Dream 7 mm -hmm. uh, you put together Shades of Black uh, Theater Festival, mm -hmm. and that's one event that's been huge. I would love you to touch on that and... Uh, and I would love for people to, to expect that this year, to talk a little bit about what it's about. I even noticed that on Facebook, somebody uh, reached out to me and said, you're doing an all black thing. So we want to break <laughs> that right now. It's not an all black thing. Everybody's invited. Right. So touch on that a little right, bit. Right, right, yeah. So um, in 2006, um, it just so happened that there were three black owned uh, theater companies that um, just happened to be scheduled back to back to back at the Dark Horse Theater. And so the initial idea, and that was, uh, Sister Style Productions, Dream Seven Theater Productions, and then um, a, a production company that I don't—I don't even know if they're still around, but it's called Robin's Nest. Um, Remember that Robin Robin's Nest Theater. And so, um, 
So the idea was, and I was a part of Dream 7 at the time because Destiny Theater Experience, it was like the year before I had founded my company. Mm -hmm. So um, we decided that we, the initial idea was to like get together, let's just promote each other's shows. And then that turned into like, well, let's, let's see if we can like, let's market them together. You know, let's, uh, let's, uh, you know, let's present like these as a, as a little small showcase mm -hmm. or a festival. And then we just started adding things. So we, we added workshops and uh, film screenings <laughs> and more plays and special events. Um, so yeah, so it just grew and, and it started in 2006 and here we are in 2018 and um, we're still at it. Yeah. I missed the last one. Uh, my call broke down on my way to the festival. Oh, really? Really? Uh, <laughs> I, had, I had sent you a message via Facebook, but I was uh, on my way to the last one, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm glad it happened. Um, so, so if you want to clear the air for all ethnicities to know, yeah, this is for everybody to come and enjoy. Yes. Um, so <clears throat> we call the Shades of Black Theater Festival. It's um, you know, it's one of those things where we wanted to, it's about focus, not exclusivity. So we wanted to highlight work by uh, black playwrights and directors, et cetera, um, because we felt like it needed to be more of that, like those voices need to be heard. But we okay. definitely don't exclude um, anyone, anyone, because like if you look through the history of our um of the Shades of Black Theater Festival, as well as the history of the companies that are a part of it, uh, their own history, we've always had, it's always been multi-ethnic. Like we've had uh, white actors, we've had um, Hispanic, um, you know, Latino actors, we've had Asian actors. Yeah. So it's always been <laughs> uh, diverse. I mean, there's definitely more black, act, you know, more black actors, but um, it's always been diverse. If you if you come to like our mixer, you know you see you know everybody there is never just limited to um, just a particular. It's never just limited to black people. So I, I want people to know that you can come and be a part of it as an actor, yeah. or you can be in the audience or whatever. It's open to everybody. There you have it. Yes. Stop lying. Yes. There you have it. <laughs> Yeah. What are you presently working on? Because I already know that you got two projects you're working on. So give us a little uh, snippet into that. Yeah. So um, right now I'm working on a couple of things. I'm working on a play called Stick Fly, which I wanted to do for years. Um, and when I wanted to do it like seven years ago or something like that, it was about to go to Broadway. So um, I couldn't I couldn't get the rights, um, get the rights to it. So. So now is the perfect time. Um, so I'm directing that producing as well. It's written by Lydia R. Diamond. And I'm producing and directing that. And also producing, I mean, also acting in another play called Smart People, which is by the same playwright at National Repertory Theater. So wow. literally running from rehearsal to rehearsal. <laughs> like I'll leave one rehearsal, go to the next. What did you cast for Stick Fly? Stick Fly, I have... Um, I have um, Dave Arnell, I have um, Jalen Dutz, Latorius Gibbons, I have um, Emma Ohm, uh, Candace Amnera, and I'm missing somebody, I'm missing a guy, oh, um, Leonard Ledford, so that's my cast, Cool. and they're amazing, they're great. When does Stick Fly open? So Stick Fly opens next week. So it'll be the second through the tenth, um, which will probably be after this. This before so two this weeks. Air. Yeah. So it, it it runs for two weeks, and then in March I'm doing a play called Peel Hill. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Cool. What kind of struggles? Because you, uh, to my definition, you are a very successful businessman, uh, playwright, director, producer. And, and, and one of the reasons that we have Star Productions, the interview side of my business, is that I want people like you who reach a certain plateau, and I want you to tell people that you didn't just wake up yesterday and everything was handed to you. Mm -hmm. but what kind of struggles you had to deal with uh, while trying to accomplish this dream? That's a great question. I mean, you know, life comes with its struggles anyway, no matter what you're doing. Yeah. Um, so you have to, like, navigate those. Um, I'm a father too, so um, there's a challenge in balancing, you know, your career with your personal life. Yeah. You know, making sure that um, you can have a successful career, but you're not neglecting um, other responsibilities. Um, sure. So, 
Um, sometimes it's a struggle with sleep, <laughs> but you know, no, it's just not easy. I mean, things things pop up like when you're when you're um, when you're managing actors, you're, you're dealing with different types of schedules. You're dealing with people who might have to drop out, and you have to jump in or do something. Mm. So there's a lot of different things that come along with like being someone who has to lead a group of people. Yeah, and so, um, but you know, um, so like. It's, but it's a, for me, it's all about, I'm a very optimistic person and, I'm a, and I consider myself a problem solver. So it's all about being able to, to keep pushing forward no matter what. And I kind of don't allow those, the things that may be happening in my personal life because we all go through our personal struggles to, to hinder what's, what I'm doing in my professional life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I've, I've lived through, uh, you know, a lot of different types of struggles just chasing this dream. Uh, you know, there are a lot of reasons why I, quote unquote, should have given up. Mm. Uh, because like when you're trying to be an artist and, you know, and, you, and you, you're like committed to not working in corporate America because you don't want to get trapped there. Yeah. So maybe sometimes money is a struggle. Fortunately, that's not something that I have to deal with now um, because, you know, things are balanced now. But like mm. when I was, you know, eight years ago, 10 years ago, it was a struggle. You know, you're trying to pay rent, trying to be an artist and, you know, all these <laughs> things. And that can be that can be hard. So, wow. yeah, man, if you would um, tell us uh, you posted on Facebook that you couldn't sleep for several Facebook love our relationship because whenever you post something, it comes to me first. <laughs> and and it, you say that you couldn't sleep for several nights. You would go yeah. to bed and then wake up in the middle of the night. And, and what's going on with your sleeping I, patterns? Man, okay. I, Do you need to drink some tea? <laughs> man, I don't know. You know, last night was the first night in like three weeks that I slept uh, like a decent need. But uh, it's, I can tell I'm headed back in the right direction. But I think what it was was I, I was off for like we, you know, I teach spoken word in schools as well. So when the snow, you know, I wasn't working. Yeah. So, so my schedule got off and um, I didn't have any, there was no accountability. There was nothing that kept me on a schedule. So I was like sleeping whenever I wanted to sleep. <laughs> up when I was on, and then I ended up staying up for almost 48 hours um, once because I was inspired. I'm, you know, entrepreneur, artist. So one night I'm inspired. I'm writing down goals and <laughs> my vision and these things, new ideas. And before I know it, it's time for me to go teach this workshop. Wow. So, yeah. Uh, you not only use your skills on stage, you use them also in films. Mm -hmm. And I've seen you uh, directing and, and acting in films. Mm -hmm. uh, how was that transition for you? And can we expect to see more of you doing the films now that you've uh, transitioned over to that genre? Yeah, you know, I have some, I have some plans for film because um, it's a medium that allows you to reach more people than theater does. And I love theater just because of the, um, the instant gratification. You know, the, the audience is right there and you get to... You know, you're in the moment. There's no cut. Yeah. You know, it's, so that's <laughs> yeah. the exciting part of theater. It can be scary too. Right. But um, I do. I love film. Like I, I, I love to go and sit in a movie theater and watch a great film. Yeah. And I want to be a part of making those. And I've done some a little bit of directing. I've done um, a, a, a decent amount of acting in some like independent films. But I want to really tackle um, like a big project, passion project for me. Yeah. And so I think um, this year I'm going to start get the ball rolling with con um, not converting, but I want to um, adapt one of my plays into Ooh. into a film. So nice. Just about deciding which one. And I have a great film idea that's just kind of you know circling around in my head that I'm ready to. Um, that I think I'm ready to attack. So cool. we'll see. We'll see. Cool, cool. I think I would, I would, uh, I would want to be part of that. Yeah, man. So let yeah. me know. Let yeah, me know. Most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this January, I don't know if it was a New Year resolution. You mentioned about starting to write a book that people have been bothering you. You should be writing <laughs> a book and all that. And yeah. You, you mentioned that you started writing. What's up with that? Yeah. So, um, so you know, like I said before, I've 
always loved writing. Um, I have a journalist um, background as well, journalism background. And so um, I've written in many different mediums and many different genres. And I've um, just wanted, I've always written essays and short stories. So yeah, I tackled a novel when I was in college. So I wrote a novel. Um, I never did anything with it. I still have it. We'll see, you know, if I want to revamp it one day. But Mm -hmm. um, I just started, you know, I started sharing these stories on Facebook just because um, I like to talk about you know, things that are happening. Uh, I'm a storyteller. I like to hear stories. I like to share because especially like if I've learned something or there's a message or something positive in a situation, um, I like to just share it with the people. And so for the last few years, people have just like responded really well to the things that I've written, Mm. you know, telling me that they really enjoy my stories. Like even people who don't comment or don't like or don't say anything, but I'll be talking to somebody and they'll say, oh, I really loved when you talked about this. And I'm like, I didn't even realize, <laughs> you know, that you even knew about that. You know, it's just Facebook, you know, when you got Facebook friends, they, um, you know, it's a it's a platform to get to get stuff out there. So because of people's response to, no, I've always wanted to write a book, but people's response to mm. my Facebook stories have have motivated me to um to write something because people are like, you need to write a book. I hear that all the time. I look forward to it, man. I look forward to it. Um, you have managed, you are one of the few people who have managed to keep a very creative artistic lifestyle and still manage to invest into the community. And so as I watch your um, story and your life, uh, you invest into the young people teaching him spoken word Mm -hmm. and you've gone as far as the prison to bring your passion there. And I would love for you to elaborate on both of these. So our audience can know that there are different aspects to the man behind the man. Yeah. Um, so I work with a nonprofit organization called Southern word and I, I partner with them, um, or with the organization to go into schools and teach spoken word um, to students anywhere from middle school, sometimes elementary too, but um, mostly middle school, high school, and then some college. And it's an opportunity to teach literary skills through per, uh, spoken word. It's an opportunity to um, help them find their voice and to be able to use it and to 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 because um, public speaking people, are, you know, a lot of people are afraid right. of public speaking. <laughs> right. And so it's about giving them their those tools and the confidence to be able to share their truth no matter who they're in front of, no matter where they are, no matter um, what it is. And so going in there and inspiring kids and, um, you know, seeing gift kids who are really gifted at writing and, and, and inc- continuing to encourage them and those nice. who are not so, you know, not so, who don't feel that they're naturally gifted, but you give them the tools and show them that like anybody can be a writer. Mm-hmm. You just have to start writing. Nice. And so we, I see how that helps with confidence and how that has helped shape lives and, uh, and, and, you know, for the better. So uh, love that. And then with the prison, um, I went in as a volunteer like three years ago and um, to be a part of this class, just kind of as a student, because the, the way the class is set up is that you have those who are on the inside and then those who are on the outside learning together, teaching mm-hmm. and learning together. So I, I signed up to be a volunteer uh, in the class and ended up leading some of the classes, <laughs> <laughs> which led to me um, teaching a playwriting class all of last year. Yeah. And so we took, uh, I taught a playwriting class. We wrote 10, we wrote 10 minute plays and we were able to take those 10 minute plays and take them to the community. So I produced them at the mm-hmm. Dark Horse Theater yeah. and was packed out both nights. So of course the guys couldn't be there because they're incarcerated, but the community came and supported them. Some of their family members came. Um, it was a great night of theater and them having their voices out there to yeah. the world. And did you get a chance to, to uh, oh, so you did take a video. Yeah, and Perfect. the guys got a chance to watch it. Oh, sweet, yeah. sweet. Wow. So it's obvious that with the many things you have going on, with the tapestry of life and its complexities, you still manage to reach out to your community and do that. What do you have to say to people who said, I just don't have time? To do anything but me. <laughs> uh, you make time for the things that you really want to do, you know? And um, so, like, I, 
you know, sometimes I run into people who have these ideas about things that they want to do in life, but they come up with reasons why they won't work. Mm-hmm. And um, I could tell you a lot of stories. I, I got to tell you this one story, and this is uh, slightly off the off topic. Come on. So um, I had I've taken some of my plays to other um, to other cities, and I a few years ago I was supposed to take I was I was taking this show to New Orleans. Never been home. And so um, the way things worked out, I can't remember what year this was, but I didn't really have all the money, mm-hmm. um, you know, when it comes to like, uh, you know, travel, paying for travel for seven people and hotel and all that. Yeah, it's expensive. So, yeah. So um, I step out on faith all the time. <laughs> but it was getting down to the wire, and I didn't have the, <laughs> the money. It was literally hours before we were supposed to leave. I hadn't slept because I was up worried about, like, what was I going to do? It's like, I cannot take these people out on the road with, like, half the money and not be able to get them back. <laughs> now, these are all these are all friends of mine who probably would have said, okay, we can we can all pitch in. Sponsor. And get back. Yeah. But that wasn't their responsibility. So... I prayed about it. I was like, Lord, I'm giving this to you because I I don't have I don't have the solution. <laughs> I, so I said, I'm gonna go to sleep for this hour. Because I had to be right back up. I'm gonna sleep for an hour. And when I wake up, Lord, I'm just I'm trusting you to have it done. Mm. And when I woke up, a friend called me um and offered to give me to loan me the money that I needed. Wow. Yeah. Wow. In the middle of the night, a friend called me. And then when we, so that was enough to get, to, to make it possible. And then while we got to, uh, when we got to New Orleans, we had already done the show. We were hanging out for another day. Somebody out of the blue donated $300. Nice. I didn't even know who it was at first. Nice. I, I discovered who it was later. But yeah, no idea. This person had no idea that I was that money was an issue, but I got that. So like, so yeah, like you got to step out on faith. You got to uh, believe in yourself. Yeah. You got to believe in your dream. Mm. And if you really want to do something, whether that's volunteering or whether that's being um, mm. a playwright, whether that you know, if you really, if something is really um, on you to do, then you got to make the time. You got to create the space. To do it, and sometimes that may mean removing things that are not serving that dream or not fulfilling mm-hmm. that purpose. So, good. yeah, it's good. Before you go, how do we follow you? How do we stay in touch? I'm on your email list. A lot of people uh, don't know that anytime your shows are coming out, even for auditions, mm-hmm. uh, I receive your email. Sometimes I even receive group texts for last minute things. Uh, before we, follow, we we let you go, tell us how do we stay in touch with you? How do we know what's going on with the Destiny Theater experience? And uh, know exactly with the two shows you got going on right now, how do we even try to start looking at buying tickets for those? Yes. Um, so um, I'm on social media, um, the Destiny Theater experience. Um, and that's theater with the R in, in front of the E. So that's T. H E A T R. So that's the French way. Yeah. <laughs> Destiny Theater Experience. Um, you find us on Instagram, Destiny Theater Experience, um, Twitter, Team DTE, and Facebook, Destiny Theater Experience. Um, I'm going to be getting a website up soon. Um, just, But I've always just used social media to promote stuff. Yeah. So, but yeah. But, um, yeah, so that's how you can find us, and that's where there, there's ticket information on all of those platforms. Cool. Um, and then uh, my name is Sean Witzel. I'm on um, all of those platforms as well. You can find me. And um, yeah, and, our, and if you email us, destinytheaterexperience at gmail.com, we can add you to our email list where you'll get updates about mm-hmm. like what shows we're doing and really? what future plans and auditions, et cetera. Nice. Yeah. Finally, self actualization is usually defined as somebody realizing the ultimate goals and, and, and potentials that they want to accomplish. What does that look like for you? What is the dream for you to say, uh, I set out to do this in my life and I did it. Um, so 
people ask me all the time, what do you ultim ultimately want to do? I just want to be able to um, do what it is that I love, do it at a high level. Mm. I want to be able to create, um, uh, I want to be able to earn a living and be able to like pass something down to my, uh, uh, you know, my daughter and if I have few other kids. And I want to help people. And I do that by staying positive, staying motivated. I write down my goals a lot, even day to day. I get up every day or every night before bed. I'll write down what I want to accomplish. And I visualize it. I can see myself doing it. And I don't allow anyone else um, to take that away from me. Nice. So what I want to do involves uh, humanitarianism. It, it, it involves um, uh, art, the arts, film, um, volunteering. Uh, it's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, so like I see my life is very uh, multidimensional. And I always have, and I don't limit myself. And um, I just believe that I can do anything. Yeah. And so I walk through life like that. Nice. Yeah. Man, before you go, I always let my guests talk to my audience last before I close the show. And right now, as always, there's always somebody struggling with something. There's always the next Sean who's 15 years old, wants to write, wants to direct, watching this. And there's always the grown man who passed out on his dream, says it's too late, and somebody's trying to, um, you know, commit suicide, or somebody's like giving up on their dreams. What is the last thing you want to say to our audience? I just want to say that you matter, and that your dreams matter, and that um, there's nothing that is, if something is in your heart to do, mm. um, then you have the tools and the resources, you have access to those things to be able to do them. They might not be in your hands right now, but there's a way for you to get them in order mm. for you to, to live out your purpose and to be happy. And so I encourage anyone who is struggling with anything to know that that doesn't have to be the end of your book, that doesn't have to be your final chapter. You can get through depression, mm. you can get through, um, you know, you know, you can get through whatever rut you may be in at your job or with your family. It's all possible to come out on the other side. So I encourage you to just keep going um, and um, and you'll get there. You'll get there. I couldn't say it, couldn't say it better. <laughs> Amen to that. Yes, definitely. Man, I appreciate you. I thank, thank you. you. I know that uh, it took a lot for you to step some, take some time out of your schedule to be with us at Star Productions. It's a pleasure, I'm man. very glad you came. Thank you. Uh, my guest, playwright, director, writer, entrepreneur, Sean Witzel, community activist. <laughs> Let's not forget that. Sean Witzel, go see um, Stick Life. Stick Fly. Stick Fly. Uh, coming up uh, February 2nd through the 10th. Mm -hmm. And uh, check Sean out on Facebook. I'm going to put all of his information uh, down below. You'll see it. And go ahead and send him an email so you can go on the email list. This is a man you need to follow to keep up with what's going on in all things uh, arts and theater in Nashville. And if you miss Stick Fly, you have an opportunity opportunity to see Peel Hill, which will be March 23rd through the 31st. And March 30th is my birthday, so you definitely want to be there. <laughs> Celebrate with me at the Dark Horse Theater. Nice. Uh, <laughs> I'm Max Desir with Star Productions, spiritually trained and renewed productions, where it's not enough to be talented, you have to be spiritually trained and renewed. Thank you very much, sir. All right, thank you. <laughs>